Hello, I'm Nyoko, and here's year 14 of Galaxy Clan, and this is a big one. Real quick, I have new holiday-themed designs up on my Redbubble, and they'll be on screen while I talk about stuff, because... Oh boy! If you haven't heard from Muni Post or the Discord link below, by the way, this year is late because I lost everything on my computer. That being said, I had already played this year, and I'm recoding everyone again, so Galaxy Clan is not over, and year 15 should be out at the end of January. More information later in the video. As for year 14, we had dark forest drama, and let's get into my longest animatic ever based on some side drama things that I did. It was randomly decided based on in-game events throughout the year with a bunch of possible results, but I don't really have a generator to share. But warning, blood and or potential deaths can happen in this section. Sorry it's so long. But yeah, let's hop in. Umber Curl wakes up confused about where she is. A cat appears and introduces herself as Freckle Spot, noting Umber Curl's unrequited love struggles. She says to win the Tom over, she must become a strong warrior and that she can help her. Strength is power, after all. Umber Curl hesitantly agrees to this. And the next moon, Brightstar is investigating the Dark Forest and is shocked to see that Umber Curl is here. He confronts her, asking why she's here and who she's seeing. And she admits that she's here for extra training and that a cat named Frecklespot is training her, along with Hollowpath and Snipcloud. While he is surprised to hear that his son is here, Brightstar tells her about Frecklespot's evil deeds and tries to convince her that Frecklespot is using her. He is successful as Umbercole realizes how bad of a situation she's actually in. He orders her not to return and not to say anything to the clan because he has it handled. She promises she won't, though she does look worried. On another day, the wild cedar blaze smirks. He laughs after wounding Frecklespot during an ambush from him, Frecklespot glaring and lowly growling at him. Cedar Blaze simply turns and laughs about how fun she is to fight, casually saying that he might have to kill one of her little apprentices she has to make some more permanent playmates down here before leaving. Brightstar returns on another moon, the hair on his neck raising as he hears a familiar voice. Maquastar sarcastically says, Well, if it isn't the heroic leader, do you always have to go crawling where you don't belong? And suddenly Fox, Standspot, and Sagefern run out to ambush him. Brightstar is outnumbered and he gets injured before Snipcloud runs out to protect him. Fighting well and while also getting hurt, he gets the other cats to leave, protectively guarding his wounded father. While recovering from their wounds, the medicine cats are suspicious and not the most trusting of Snipcloud after hearing the Dark Forest is involved with this. Flame Bear tried his best, but Brightstar ended up losing two lives and was still weak. The medicine cats leave on Brightstar's request and Brightstar tries to convince Snipcloud that the Dark Forest is dangerous and that Frecklespot is using him. But Snipcloud defensively replies with, The Dark Forest is dangerous, sure, but and there are bad cats there, but Frecklespot is not one of them. Without her training, they would have died there. He refuses to listen to his dad and simply tells him to just focus on getting better before he leaves the den with a limp. A moon later, while training with Frecklespot and Hollowpath, he's complaining about his dad not understanding. Frecklespot speaks vaguely about how she understands his worry as she's made past mistakes. With concern in her voice, she asks how many lives he's down to now. Snipcloud sadly says too, but that he's mostly recovered from Maquistar's attack. Frecklespot simply saying that that's good and dismisses Snipcloud from the training for the night. Once he's gone, she turns to Holopath and bluntly tells him to kill Brightstar. Holopath bristles and deflects, asking, didn't she want to do that? He could bring Brightstar to her instead, under the guise of Snipcloud being in trouble. She agrees and dismisses him. On patrol a moon later, Jump Paw notices a starry cat that looks a lot like his grandpa. The cat tells Jump Paw that Brightstar is in danger. Jump Paw tries to communicate this to Fernheart, but while she can figure out he's worried about Brightstar, she doesn't quite understand what he's trying to communicate, and comforts him that Brightstar is strong and he's recovered well from what the clan believed was a late-night rogue attack. That night, Holopath silently leads Brightstar to the predetermined meeting spot. Brightstar may be in the dark, but Holopath is fully prepared to kill Frecklespot when she attacks. On the way there, Holopath freezes at a scent, and before he can shout, Silkfur runs between them, bringing a line of fire to separate them. Silkfur turning quickly to attack Holopath. On the other side of the flames, Mintsplash approaches Brightstar and yells that Brightstar took what was his and he'll savor this moment, attacking the weakened leader. Meanwhile, Holopath stands over the barely moving body of Silkfur, unable to get past the flames. He quickly wakes up in his nest and he hears Fernheart screaming that Brightstar is dying. He exits the den and scents blood. He hears Brightstar whisper Mintsplash's name before there's a heavy silence. Brightstar is declared dead and Fernheart wails in despair as the clan gathers. 
Bright Star's kin running to his side, and after a while, Holopath can feel the gazes of the other cats turn on him. Not wasting time, and with a small shake to his voice, he asks Flame Bear if there's enough moonlight to take him to the moonfall tonight. Feeling numb, he follows the fear scent of the medicine cat through the star fields. Flame Bear has a nervous shake to his voice as he guides Holopath behind the waterfall. Holopath lays down and feels the spray of the water until the feeling stops and a blur of familiar scents surround him. Holopath notices the smell of his former mentor Bristlefroat approaching. She stands for a moment before giving him a life for humility. Holopath then senses his old friend Sage Dust waking up. Holopath can tell he's angry. He walks up and quickly gives him a life for farsightedness, growling before leaving. A sweeter scent replaces him, Lavender Heather sighing as she gives her brother a life for sympathy. Lingering a bit longer before the sense of more sisters replace her, Lycan Spark gives a life for bravery, saying that he'll need it, and quickly she is replaced by Bugwish who gives a life for faith, telling Holopath to always have it. Holopath shivers as a scent he can't identify walks up. It feels warm and familiar, but it isn't until Palepath introduces herself that he knows it's his mother. He feels his breathing stop in shock and then pain as she gives him a life for endurance for Fick and Finn. He tries to linger on her scent as she leaves, but is distracted by the scent of his dad, Emberfeather, who walks up and gives a life for clear judgment, sternly saying to make the right decisions. Holopath whips his head around at the smell of cinnamon feather. She stares at Holopath and then softly gives a life for love with a sadness in her voice, lingering there before leaving. Holopath follows her scent until noticing bright stars, the old leader standing in front of him and sighing. Holopath goes to apologize but hears sudden surprise from the Star Clan cats. The sounds of them slowly fade and Holopath suddenly recognizes a foul stench. Turning angrily just in time for Frucklespot to pounce, pinning him down and giving him a life for vengeance. Holopath shakes as he tries to regain his strength, growling, but Frucklespot simply laughs at him, saying his rule will be one filled with blood and he will walk a path made on the bodies of his clanmates all the way to the dark forest where he will rot. She says Holopath is no more and to enjoy his new name, Hollowstar, and have fun leading his clan to ruin. She taunts him, saying that if he kills her, that will just be another death on his paws, and teases him about who to corrupt next. Holostar goes to lunge forward but wakes up suddenly, growling in anger with Flame Bear watching concerned. A moon into his leadership, Pound Splinter found Fernheart and confessed that he once trained with Mint Splash, feeling guilty after hearing Brightstar's dying word. Though she's shocked, she suddenly asks to be taken to the Dark Forest. Pound Splinter is taken aback but is unable to say no to her. That night, the first cat they run into is Frecklespot, who tauntingly asks them if they're looking for their clan leader, or perhaps her son. Fernheart watches confused as Pound Splinter guards her and spits at Frecklespot if she knows where Mint Splash is. Frecklespot simply casually looking at her nails, commenting that his brother would know better. Shame that Pound Splinter hasn't seen him in a while. Suddenly laughing, she brings up that Silkfur is actually a permanent resident here now thanks to Hollowstar. And suddenly Silkfur jumps, clawing at Pound Splinter. Fernheart is about to run to help, but Mint Splash arrives, pinning her down with a clawed paw. He growls at Frecklespot that Fernheart is his. Silkfur blocks Pound Splinter from getting closer, continuing to land hits on him. Fernheart bares her teeth at the casualness that Mint Splash has holding her down and how he declared her like an object. She quickly turns, swiping at his cheek, which surprises him. She yells in Mint Splash's face that she will never be his, and he will not hurt more of her loved ones. Mint Splash shocked and angry at the sight that she's putting up a fight. Unknown to them, Frecklespot smiles as Snipclad arrives. Frecklespot quickly whispers to go for the throat, avenge his father, and save his mother. Snipclad runs forward and quickly deals a killing blow, as Fernheart watches shocked at the sudden appearance and actions of her son. Mint Splash slowly fades in front of everyone to nothing, and Silkfur looks over from his extremely injured brother. Pound Splinter shaking and struggling to stand. He collapses shortly after, and Silkfur looks at around at all the cats, quickly turning tail and running, knowing he's outnumbered. Snipcloud smiles excitedly at his mother until his face falls, seeing her heavy breathing. Both the situation in general and her weak lungs was affecting her body. She wakes up gasping in her nest, vaguely aware of the panicked cats around her and the smell of Pound Splinter's blood. So that was the longest animatic ever, and we're heading straight into Star Clan, which means Bright Star is dead. He died at 104 moons old, and you saw how it happened. He was killed from wounds from both Maqua Star's gang and then later Mint Splash at different times during this year. This poor guy. And side note, the internet was giving me conflicting information in regards to what happens to a cat when they die in the dark forest, if they're still alive at the time. So I kind of just kept the living cats to say that they died from their wounds in the waking world later. But yeah, Brightstar was pretty nervous for most of the year. 
He was trying to do his best looking after his clan and was upset that he couldn't convince Snipcloud the truth. He didn't have it in him to do any harsh punishments towards his son and was more concerned with his safety in general. Brightstar tried his best to fix things like he normally would, but sadly it seems that his main character energy luck has finally run out. He's very concerned about the state of his clan and feels disappointed to say the least with certain cats. Looking at you, Hollowstar. And he's very sad he had to leave Fernheart. But next up, quick detour. Silkfur was killed by Hollowstar at 52 moons old, and as you saw, he's in the Dark Forest now. There's really not too much to say about him that wasn't in the animatic section, but in general, I wonder what he'll do now that Minsplash has faded. He was outnumbered there, but considering that he was looking at Snipcloud with Malice the next moon, I think he wants revenge. In general, Silkfur is a very interesting foe to have in the Dark Forest since I've made it that he knows how to start fires there. It really seems that Silkfur has fully become a puppet for Minsplash before this, and he was really controlled by his orders to the point of dying for them and also killing his own brother. So it'd be interesting to see where he goes from here. Speaking of, Pound Splinter died from his wounds that he got fighting in the Dark Forest. He died at 54 moons old, and I'm sad. All of the Oak Moth kids are dead now, and despite Pound Splinter's earlier training, he was a good guy, so he goes to Star Clan. He actually had statuses of disappearing often this year, so I think he was actually meeting with Silkfur before this, possibly running into little fights here and there or trying to stop him from doing everything he was doing, like destroying herbs and stuff, at least while Silkfur was alive, just trying to get answers. Pound Splinter also had the status of preparing the warriors for battle, so I think he knew something was coming. After Brightstar's death, he just couldn't hold in his guilt anymore and had to tell Fernhart. And you saw how that turned out. I think it's extra sad because I definitely think that Pound Splinter was close with both Brightstar and Fernhart, especially since she gave him the oak leaves he's wearing. And I was actually hoping for a deputy Pounce in the future, but we never got that, sadly. Moving out of the animatic, next up, I am so sad to say that Burrowfrith died in childbirth at 117 moons old. She and Meringue had a litter of free kits, and sadly her body couldn't handle it at her age. I'm so sad she didn't stick around longer. Her and Meringue were actually really sweet, and they had brought Lost Creek Clan kits back to their own clan, and warned Bug Clan of a badger. It's unfair. But you might notice that the One Moon Old Troublesome Plover Kit and Chanterelle Kit are also here. And unfortunately, a mass extinction triggered in-game, and these two, as well as many upcoming cats, were swept away in a flood that got the camp. That in itself could have been an animatic, but we had too much stuff going on this year, so I only made one picture. I feel so bad for Meringue. He lost his mate and two kits so quickly, but we'll get to him later. There is at least one surviving kit in this litter that you'll find out about later. But yeah, on to the other flood deaths. Brindlehale died at 29 moons. She was still a bit bossy this year and had told off younger cats for dishonesty on patrol, and she had also been on a patrol that saved a cat from a dog, and that cat joined this clan, so you'll meet him later. Overall, Brindlehale was a bit harsh on cats, but in a loving way, kind of just wanting them to live up to their full potential. She was also kind of disappointed in Pansy Bloom, but you'll, you'll hear about that later. But yeah, I'm sad that we lost her after she managed to find her way home last year. Poor Whispreeze, man. She lost another kit. And the next flood deaf was Sherb, who died at 110 moons old. And I miss her. She had also invited a cat to the clan this year, this time being a younger injured one. But she was a bit interesting in general this year, and this might seem out of nowhere if you haven't seen my recent streams. But I've determined that she had been sent from the mountains on a mission to specifically find Galaxy Clan and bring them there. She was more of a scout sent by Star Clan to make sure she found the right cats, and throughout the year, more cats on the same mission actually showed up. Sadly, she died before anything happened, but we'll get into this more later. For now, on to more deaths. Umber Curl also died in the flood at 56 moons old, and she had a year. As you saw, she had been training in the dark forest briefly, but luckily Brightstar brought her back to her senses and she stopped going. She was mostly still trying just to get together with Cloud J this year, who, sneak peek, actually did return. And I'm not kidding, she asked him out and got rejected twice on the same moon. It was, it was quite an ordeal. Beyond that, she saved Branch Deer in a fight with an enemy warrior and had the status of wanting to leave the clan after Brightstar's death. And things about the Dark Forest did come out to the clan, and when it did, she confronted Hollowstar in front of everyone about why Brightstar never did anything about him or Snipcloud resulting in more drama, which I'll get into later on. But despite her oopsies, I think Umbercurl still deserves Star Clan since it was nothing major, and most of her 
less good moments are just because she was in love with Cloud J. I'm going to miss her and I'm sad that she never got to pass down her curly coat. Who knows, maybe we'll run into another curly cat later. And I am so sad because the next death was the 15 moon old missile feather who was charismatic and a good storyteller. And yes, this game gave her feather as a suffix and that's why I pushed the whole Hall of Half basically adopted her narrative. But now I feel so bad. Mistlefeather was actually apprenticed to Dark Whistle, and she said that being a mediator was her one goal, which really surprised me. I imagined her as a cat that shows affection for touch, and that she was very cuddly for the with those that she cared about, kind of just pouncing on them and being a bit goofy. But she did really well in her training and was giving her name at only 10 moons old. She was shocked at some information that came out about Holostar, but she told him that she'd stand by him. Unfortunately, however, the Flood had other plans. But next up is Prickleflex, who died at 35 moons old, and this flood sucks, I am in pain. He confessed the lightning flight in the beginning of this year, and they were mates for the majority of it, and everything was cute, and it was fine. He also wanted to speak with Hope Fern, which I took as he wanted to tell her to stop being mean to lightning flight. Um, late into this year, Lightning Flight announced that she was expecting kits, and he was so excited. But on that same moon, I actually accidentally sent them both on patrol, and they ended up getting caught in a storm. Luckily, nothing bad happened, but oops, sorry, sorry, Lightning Flight, I didn't mean to send you out. Sadly, Prickleflex died one moon before Lightning Flight had her kits, so he never got to meet them. But I imagine during the flood, he prioritized getting her to safety, leading to him being swept away. Here's a sneak peek at the babies. This is actually a little into the future, because they're potatoes right now in game, only zero moons old. But yeah, I'm so sad about Prickleflex, he never even got to meet his kids. And the last cat to die in the flood was the 25 moon old magpie egg. And I am crying more. Not the sweet boy, please. He had a roller coaster of a year. He started pretty happy and was making up riddles for fun, which was adorable. But then he was eavesdropping on Hollow Path because I think he was catching on to the Dark Forest shenanigans going on, or at least was aware that Hollow Path and Snip Cloud were interacting a lot. Then after Brightstar died, he had the status that he thought he was going crazy. So he kind of became an emotional mess towards the end of the year, especially everything with Snip Cloud. But it's okay, Magpie Egg, you did your best. You just rest now. I'm so sad when young cats die. And speaking of, the last cat to die in general this year was the 12 moon old Lynx Heart, who had just gotten her name that moon. She was cold and was a prophecy seeker, which side note, can we please keep some of the prophecy seekers? Please, why did they always die? She was apprenticed to Rain Dapple, who sneak peek returned to the clan. And Lynxpaw complained as her dad, Branchdeer, groomed her for a ceremony. Branchdeer's just so happy with all his kids. Sadly, she actually found a dead cat by the Thunderpath on her first patrol, which I was not drawing, but there's a harsh immediate thing to show her when she's out of camp. On the next patrol, she met a loner that was passing by and strayed into the territory, but beyond that, she mostly went on as usual. She actually died the same moon as the Flood, but a porcupine got her instead. Which was a bit unexpected, but I think she was a bit blinded by the need to find prey for the damaged clan. But yeah, Link's Heart is the last death this year, so we can finally get onto the living cats. Starting with the 74 moon old Hollow Star. And real quick, I called Holopath Hollow Star by accident last year, and a lot of you pointed that out. But I'm saying right now, that wasn't even a spoiler slip at the time, because as of recording that, he was still Hollow Path, he was not leader. <laughs> but yeah, Hollow Star was busy. Also, I took the liberties with his nine lives ceremony, and I hope you guys didn't mind. I wanted drama. That being said, he's actually down to eight lives already because he lost one to White Cough. But beyond what you saw in the animatic, Holopath had been wondering if Star Clan sent Flame Bear any prophecies, which they haven't, and has been looking for signs in general from them. Shortly after becoming leader, he stuttered on patrol, unable to break up an argument between Brindlehale and Yarrowpatch, and he seems to be having a lot of guilt and doubts in general. He really thinks that the clan is against him right now, and he's kind of right with some of them. And he seems to have suspicions against some other cats in the clan, wondering if Freckle Spot is involved with even more cats. Hope Fern in particular is someone that he's been watching, but I don't personally think that Freckle is involved with Hope. After Pound Splinter's death, he got confronted in front of the whole clan, where he admitted to being tricked by Freckle Spot, but promised that he was not loyal to her and wants nothing to do with her, fully revealing the details of Brightstar's death to the shock of the clan. Various cats spoke up during this, but we'll get to exactly what happened and what was said as we go on. But for now, Holopath has actually announced that the next moon, Galaxy Clan is moving territory, due to the stories from our newest members of the clan saying that Star Clan sent them to bring them there. So despite the clan's conflicted feelings, 
Next year, we're moving into the mountains where we will be specifically living in the Crystal Cave biome, which I've decided is a place protected heavily by Star Clan in general. Hollow Star is trying so hard to run from Freckle Spot right now, and he's admittedly very scared. He also lost a lot of cats, so he's upset about that and thinks Star Clan might be against the clan in general because he's leader. But as for his deputy, he chose the 83 moon old Cloud Jay, who returned on the first moon of this year, and I approve this choice. He got pretty scarred up this year, getting a side scar from a badger and also getting scarred by a porcupine, who seemed to be hurting a lot of cats this year. When Cloud Jay came back, he was upset to hear about Stagpaw being missing, but he's been doing his best. Interestingly, Cloud Jay had a nightmare about a rushing river, the moon before the flood happened. So I think he might just be getting visions related to disasters. He hadn't realized it was a warning, and now he feels really guilty about it because once again, he didn't tell anyone. He did, however, tell everyone that Mint Splash had whispered in his ear one time, but he had ignored the spirit and nothing had gone beyond that. He also admitted that he thought that he was making up the voice in his head. Cloud Jay isn't the happiest of Hollow Star's actions, but he's determined to be the best deputy he can be and to be there to support his remaining family, who he's very protective of now. And while he rejected Umbercurl, he was grateful for her trying so hard to find him and is sad to see her gone. But Cloud Jay 100% has a type because he's crushing on an older man again, and you'll find out who that is later. Into the Med Den, Flame Bear is 35 moons old and not doing so well. A snake was killed in camp early in the year, and on the same moon, he was hissing at kits, randomly. Uh, notably, one of those kits being Snake Kit at the time. He's been trying to interpret omens and stressing out about it, killing another snake in the camp later, and being more convinced that Star Clan is trying to tell him something about Snake Paw at the time. But he's been rethinking things and wondering if the snake warnings were actually just about all the cats that were involved in Dark Forest drama in the clan. And stream watchers may also know that a new neighbor for the clans when they move is named Viper Clan, so it might be that too. Overall, he's been not having the best time and made a mess of herbs while panicking. But in between the stress, he does actually have a new crush in the clan, which we'll get to later. But for now, here's the newly named via community poll, 27 moon old Beetle Bite, who is now insecure and incredibly clever. Blood Versity Insecure sure is a jump. He actually got feathers in game as an accessory, and I went ahead and made them swan feathers for his mom. Not an herb or a plant, and he can be an exception, it's fine. Elephant in the room, Beetle Bite asked out and is now mates with the 26 moon old Stone Fawn. But a few moons before that, Stone Fawn had asked out Lizard Snap and became mates with her. So we have a new polycule. It's another hinge poly with Stone Fawn being in the middle. And I find it kind of funny that instead of becoming another pining swan leaf situation where he just never says anything for years, Beetle Bite saw that being poly was an option from his mom's and immediately just went for it. Side note, here's another Christmas sticker design that's up on my Redbubble. I love these free. Sweet Stone Fawn and her partners who are just going through stuff right now. Beetle Bite's been feeling unneeded and unwanted in the Medicine Cat Den, saying that he doesn't deserve his full name, but Stone Fawn's be been there for him. I'll actually be making a poll in a few days about whether or not he should stay a Medicine Cat or try to be a warrior, so look out for that. On the Lizard Snap side of this relationship, her and Beetle are kind of like besties and she's happy with the situation. Beyond that, she's been fighting with her brother Snip Cloud all year and turned away without saying a word after finding out the extent of everything at that meeting that happened. She had been in awe of Hollow Star's leadership, but was so betrayed after finding out how her father died exactly. And then Magpie Egg died in the flood, so she's been upset, but Stone Fawn is really just the glue holding these two together right now. She's, she's just, you hug her, you feel better. She's just there for them. But yeah, new poly relationship, let's go. And last up in the med den is actually the 13 moon old childish snake paw, who is an avid play fighter and oddly insightful. Despite Flame Bear obviously not liking him, Snake Paw was excited to announce that he wanted to be a medicine cat apprentice, and Flame Bear is his mentor. He learned about Mulan on his first patrol, but things are kind of tense. Meringue gave him petals to wear in celebration, not fully understanding Galaxy's Medicine Cat accessory traditions, and while Flame Bear said he, that he hadn't earned them, Snake Paw whined until he was allowed to keep them. Snake Paw also was caught outside the clan territory once and is currently sad about his sister Link's Heart's death. He's also a little upset that he's the only one of his littermates without a full name now. Snake Paw being an apprentice is another thing that Beetle Bite has insecurities over. Feeling a bit replaced, especially since Flame Bear is keeping such a close eye on Snake Paw. But yeah, I kind of love Snake Paw, hoping for the best for him. On to our mediators. 
Starting with Dark Whistle, who is now 80 moons old. He really can't catch a break, I swear. He lost Bright Star, who while not blood related, that was his dad. Found out that his bio dad was the killer. Lost his son Pricklefleck and lost his apprentice Missile Feather. Despite that, he's tried to his best to continue his duties, and early in the year, he was a little worried about Jump Kit, and I feel like that was in relation to the Branch Hope drama. So I like to think he would pull Jump Kit and possibly the other kits to the side to distract them, or possibly help with Jump in his modified sign language that the clan adopted. Beyond that, he actually helped settle disputes in both Sharp and Bug Clan this year. I'm going to miss those clans. And it's sad that we'll be leaving our old neighbors behind in this upcoming move. Yeah, I lost the old clans completely, that's why we're moving. For right now, he's just trying to support others like his mom and Lightning Flight despite his own pain. He's also exhausted trying to deal with Hope Fern. Which speaking of, Hope Fern is now 46 moons old and is still mates with the 40 moon old branch deer, unfortunately. But oh boy, things have been messy. Ignoring that for a second, mediator job-wise, early in the year, Hope Fern actually negotiated with a kitty pet to use the herbs in their garden, which was very useful at the time considering our lack of herbs due to silk fur at the time. She also broke up a lot of squabbles between kits, but considering the only kits at the time were her kits, that's kind of just her job as a mom. But she has continued to be jealous. She went on a long walk deep in thought on the same moon that Prickle became mates of Lightning Flight. Something that you would think should make Hope Fern less concerned with the fact that Branch Deer has a crush on Lightning, which he wasn't even doing anything about at the time, but no, Hope Fern still hates Lightning Flight and had a prompt saying that she had a snowball fight with her on guard duty, which should be cute, but one, Hope Fern hates her, and two, that was the same moon that Lightning Flight announced that she was expecting kits. So Hope Fern, stop it! Speaking of hate, Hope Fern and Branch Deer's relationship bars are a mess, and they are both red right now with actually full-on hate. Um, they're still romantic-like, but it actually moved down from romantic love to like. And I'm honestly really surprised that they have not broken up. They were also fighting about kids the moon after Link's heart died, and now is where I reveal that Branch Deer was on the patrol that Link's heart died on. And I imagine that gives him some guilt, and that Hope Fern might be blaming him especially. Branch Deer actually warned a patrol of death berries this year and had statuses that he thought he was going crazy. And this didn't make it into the animatic, but Frecklespot had the status of wanting to walk in his dreams again this year. So I think she's trying to corrupt him, but he's rejected her trickery. During the revealing of Dark Forest secrets, he admitted this, which made Hope Fern get more suspicious and angry at him, despite him saying that he didn't even do anything. Side note, I think he's being targeted by Freckle because Holopath was his mentor. Overall, these two are toxic, and I hope they break up and don't have more kits. Hope Fern is definitely in the wrong, and Branch Deer needs to leave. I just want him to be happy at this point. But yeah, on to the warriors now. Starting with the 102 moon old Fernheart, and this poor girl does not deserve all of this. She lost Bright Star, she lost Magpie Egg, her son's a killer now, and she found out that Minsplash has still been causing damage to her loved ones despite being dead. Fernhart wasn't planning on killing him, I think she just wanted her own form of closure in a way, and to confront him directly, prove that she's strong and show him her fury in a way, try to get him to stop messing with people. But in wanting to do so, she got Pound Splinter killed by his brother. Fernhart is tired and just doesn't have the energy to deal with things like her problematic kits right now. She can't get Snipcloud smiling after he killed so casually out of her head, and she's exhausted trying to get Hope Fern to listen to her. She's happy for her daughter and her new relationship, but right now Fernhart is closest to Dark Whistle, Cloud J, and her newest apprentice, who just became a warrior. She doesn't know what to do anymore, and I hope she can recover from all of this. I wouldn't be surprised if she retired early at this point. She deserves the rest. But moving on. Next up is a new face, the 100 moon old adventurous Ragged, who is an unusually strong fighter and has a deep Star Clan bond. He joined after being saved from a dog, and he's another messenger from the mountains, which I'll get into more detail about right now. So Galaxy Clan will be moving to the mountains where I've been streaming free new neighboring clans for them. I've also mentioned that this new territory is the old home of a long gone clan, another clan I used to stream that is wiped out now. The reasons I've made for why there's just a clan territory completely up for grabs right now is that long ago cats from each of the remaining clans at the time were given visions to serve as watchers, and they've been living there waiting for a sign that they were told would come. That sign coming now for them to go and find Galaxy Clan. I imagine any cats that tried to take the territory in the past would have been struck down by Star Clan forces if they weren't invited there. So the clans eventually just kind of left that territory be. 
That being said, if you've seen the streams, I think that Sherb was originally from J Clan, hence her feathers. And Ragged here used to be a Viper Clan cat once upon a time. With that said, after the flood and Sherb's death, Ragged and the other messengers finally convinced Holostar of the move. Beyond that, I need to point out that Ragged is the cat that Cloud J is crushing on, and Ragged likes him back, so there's that to look out for in the future. But next up is Hillfuzz, and real quick, Snow is agender and prefers neo pronouns of Snow, Snow, Snow Self, and Fuzz, Fuzzes, Fuzz Self. Snow joined Trans, so that's cool. Hillfuzz is cold, 83 moons old, and a lore master, and Fuzz is the last messenger from the mountains. While Hillfuzz has been here, Fuzz has managed to chase away a dog, a rogue, and a fox. Hillfuzz also was telling stories to eager kids, which I thought was adorable. Hillfuzz also has a crush on Holostar, surprisingly, and while Holostar doesn't currently like Snow romantically, he does have a lot of platonic like at this point, and I'd actually be really interested to see if Holostar will end up liking Snow back. I think Holostar needs some happiness again, so I'd be down for them to get an emo partner. By the way, Hillfuzz's bangs cover Snow's eyes, but I did design what Snow's face looks like underneath that, so I'll put that on screen for anyone interested. But yeah, I really do like Hillfuzz, and I think Snow is the most convincing of the free messengers. With Fuzz's lore master trait, and with how Fuzz developed a close rela relationship with the current leader. Moving on, Whispery's is now 67 moons old, and she was doing a bit better this year. At least until her daughter Brindlehild died in the flood, which hurts, but she doesn't seem to have shut down as much as last year. And the whole clan's kind of shaken up in general right now. She seemed to realize that her apprentice was having a hard time, and they actually ended up getting a strong bond, surprisingly, based on how things were going last year. Together, they also helped a lost Bug Clan apprentice get home and chased away a dog. Something funny is that Whispery's actually had the status that she was barking like a dog that moon, so now I'm wondering if she gained a small knowledge of how to speak dog while she was lost, like Millie in the actual books, or if she's just goofing off and mocking the dog later that, later that day. Either way, she seemed happier, which is all I can ask for. I hope things keep looking up for her. Again, sad about her dead daughter. But next up is the newly returned and named responsible Rain Dapple, who is 36 moons old and a good storyteller and a good swimmer. He was found at the border, tired but happy to return, and Dark Whistle purred loudly at his return. Happy to see his kit back. Prickleflex was also excited to have his sibling back. Also, to add more sadness, Rain Dapple is the only good swimmer in the clan, so I think she jumped into the mayhem during the flood, trying and failing to save her brother. Pain. Speaking of that, as before mentioned, Link's heart had been his apprentice, and considering Rain Dapple lost both her brother and her apprentice, who had just become a warrior in the same moon, he's not doing the best. She's friends of Lightning Flight, though, and I like to think that she's going to be helping look after her brother's kits. Kind of hoping that Rain Dapple will get one as an apprentice, but we'll have to see. Glad to have him back, regardless of the circumstances. Next up is a new face, the 35 moon old daring sleek clove with a keen eye. He was invited to the clan after Hilfuz and Sherb had found him injured on the territory. He's more on the younger side, so I'm not saying he's a messenger from the mountains, but it is interesting that two of them found him. After joining the clan, he almost immediately gained a crush on Flame Bear, and Flame Bear likes him back, so I'm rooting for that. I think it's cute. I think he gained a crush after being in the Medicine Cat Den a lot because he joined injured and then later got his tail halfway bit off by a dog. Yeah, I don't think that this boy is that good of a fighter, but he has charm. Despite that, it seems Sleek Clove immediately caught on to Snipcloud's suspicious tendencies because he had been keeping an eye out on him, which I think is very interesting. I really like Sleek Clove, and he just needs to stop getting hurt. <laughs> But moving on to the now 30 moon old Wormshade, he killed the snake early in the year that led to Flame Bear taking that as a sign that Snake Kit was an issue. Wormshade was kind of just watching the medicine cat hiss at the kids, too anxious to interrupt, but he was happy he got the snake before it got any kits, regardless of what happened. He's still been stressed and paranoid this year and was actually spying on Holostar. He cares about his leader, but he's scared about everything brought up with the Dark Forest. Wormshade was, however, part of the patrol that saved Ragged from the dog, so that's cool. On to Pansy Bloom, she's mostly just been existing to be honest, and the things that she has done haven't been the best. She's not really the most productive, and she keeps having the status of abandoning her chores to climb trees, so I think she might need to find a better balance of Goofy and actually helping to provide for the clan. She's not really pulling her weight. She also had the status of breaking the code this year, but the game doesn't tell you what that was, so I think it might have been something like she ate prey while she was on patrol. She's sad after Brenda Hill's death, but she's a little messy this year in general. Hoping for a better one next time and that she shapes up. 
As for her other brother, Truffle Sprout, he's still extremely nervous. These remaining siblings are now just two boys on the verge of panic attacks and a sister that thinks that she lives in trees, apparently. Truffle Sprout was shocked hearing about what was revealed with the Dark Forest and specifically Hollow Star. That's his uncle and his former mentor, and he really cares about him. Truffle Spout is concerned, but believes Hollow Star never meant for anything bad to happen. Beyond that, there was actually a funny patrol that Truffle Sprout had this year where Branch Deer laughed at the fact that he apparently wiggles his butt in excitement when he's hunting, pointing out the bad habit and embarrassing him, but that kind of just made me love this boy more. I think that's hilarious. He's a dork. Truffle Sprout was also hanging out with his mom a lot this year, so I think that's really sweet and that he likes to make sure that she's doing all right. Moving on to Yarrow Patch, who is now 26 moons old. She was so happy to see her dad come back last year. Cloud J hasn't seen her since she was a kid, and she got so emotional seeing him again, and he said that she grew up so much. Cloud J really just missed her entire growing up period. It's sad. She was also sad to tell him that Stagpaw went missing too and was ashamed to admit her mistake with the rabbit last year, but Cloud J reassured her that everyone makes mistakes and he shared the story of when he would and he shared the story of when he had been warned about the fire in the past. He encouraged her that for now the important thing is to move forward, which she seems to have taken to heart. She's been doing a lot better and she was also in the patrol that shaved Ragged from the dog. Which will be really funny to me if Cloud J ends up dating him later. <laughs> she also caught a fish this year, so that's always fun to see. On to the newly named 21 moon old Condor Breeze, which side note, I can't believe the game generated the same suffix as his mentor. I think it's sweet that they bonded more and I'm happy they did before this because that would have been a really awkward name if they didn't bond and he still kind of had this grumpiness towards her. But Condor Breeze is now righteous and a formidable fighter. He actually lectured Jumpa on the warrior code, being a bit on his freshly made warrior high horse. He seems pretty proud of himself right now, and he actually has a small crush on Truffle Sprout, which is interesting to me. Less excitingly, Frecklespot was watching him with Malice on the last moon of the year, so that's very concerning. And our youngest warrior is the 13 moon old newly named Jump Spark, who was also named via community post polls. And he's adventurous with a deep Starclan bond. He actually started off a bit more serious and was apprenticed to his grandma Fernhart, where they caught two squirrels on their first patrol. Jumpspark being her first apprentice to properly finish their training and get a normal warrior name ceremony. Can't believe it took this long. Jumpaw seems very connected to Starclam, which was shown in the animatic with Stoneleaf visiting on patrol, which him getting a vision and failing to get the patrol to understand what it was about was an actual thing that happened on the same moon that Brightstar died. Speaking of... That happening hurt. Jump Paw has been worried and felt useless not knowing how he could have stopped that. And after the death, Jump Paw had the status that the world felt smaller around him and he yearns for something unnameable. He was honored for his fearlessness during his warrior ceremony and Branch Deer purred loudly. But Jump Spark wasn't feeling the best considering his sister Link's heart had just died. His grandpa was killed early in the year and Snake Paw is disliked by his own mentor, so he's worried about that. And Hope Fern and Branch Deer have been fighting more openly. Overall, he's just kind of stressed. Jump Spark is excited, however, for the move, though he hopes for change to be a good thing right now. He's just wanting things to get better somehow. Heading into the Elder's Den, Cinder Petal's back, which I wasn't actually expecting him to make it back, but he did. The Mad Lad. He's 171 moons old now, and unfortunately for him, he showed up on the very last moon this year when the clan is metaphorically on fire, and he's a bit taken aback at all the information that was thrown at him. He's also extremely upset at the fact that Galaxy Clan is moving. He fought his way back here, and this has been his home pretty much all his life. He's been reliving a lot of the things that the clan has been through, but he snapped that if the clan's really moving, he'll go. He doesn't want to, but he's not being separated from his clan and his family again. That being said, I'm worried about how this is going to go because he's really old. Also, I was scared because while he was lost and Silkfur was still alive, he thought that he spotted Silkfur on the same moon that Silkfur had the status that he was hunting, and I swear if Cinderpetal ended up dying the next moon, I would have screamed. But yeah, he's back. <laughs> also in the Elder's Den, technically, but more so moving into the nursery now, we have Meringue, who's 125 moons old now, and his one living daughter, Gold Kit, who's two moons old. She's polite. She also rolled to be born with a crooked jaw, and she's adorable, and I'm happy that he didn't completely lose the entirety of his family. Away from the sad for a bit, I think it's funny that Meringue gave Snake Paw petals not really understanding traditions. 
He probably thought he was helping and being part of the clan, but he was still pretty new. He also retired the moon after he avoided a monster by the skin of his teeth, which was the moon before Burrowfrift announced that she was expecting. Now back to Sad, I feel like he and Burrowfrift knew having this litter was a risk. So losing her hurt, but he wasn't absolutely devastated, you know? It was just something in the back of their minds like, yeah, this could potentially happen, and when it did, it was sad. The flood, however, was horrible and added on to his grief, but he's been putting a lot of his energy into Gold Kit as well as helping Lightning Flight with her new litter. The two seem to have bonded being single parents now, and I think it's sweet. Which, speaking of, here is the 35 moon old Lightning Flight with her four potato babies. They are zero moons old, but I gave you a sneak peek earlier. She has two sons, Fuzzy Kit, who looks a lot like her with a white shirt on, and Spring Kit, who looks a lot like Pricklefleck. I'm happy that at least one of the kits looks like Pricklefleck. She also has two daughters, Osprey Kit, who looks a lot like Garlic, and Orange Kit, who while Lightning Flight never met Orange back, I imagine Butterfly Catcher told her stories, which led to her naming this kit after him. I just wanted Prickle Lightning to be happy, but the game said no, and I'm so sad. I really, really liked these two together. I'm also upset that Hope Fern is just making things worse. Lightning Flight had such a stressful pregnancy due to everything in the winter, or should I say Leaf Bear, but she seems to be doing her best and I'm happy that she has Meringue at least in the nursery. I'm sure that Flame Bear, despite his stress, is also looking out for her. She's worried about traveling with her small kids, but the journey is set to start once they're one moon old. And with them, these are the last cats in the clan for now. So let's take a look at everyone outside the clan. I'm not redrawing them as I said, so quick recap with a stole frame. The 74 moon old Flax Roar and the 26 moon old Stagpaw, who I haven't edited the picture for, so just take my word for it. They're still lost. And I will say before the computer crash, I did actually play one moon into the future, but I've made that moon non-canon except for one fact, and that was that one of these two comes back next moon, but you'll have to wait until the next year to find out who did. And if they don't return in time for the journey, I still have them coded in as lost in game so that if they make it home, then it's even more impressive. But yeah, Hollow Star has been holding out hope for his sister, especially after not seeing her in Star Clan. But he sadly thinks that the clan needs to leave without her. And Cloud J and Yarrow Patch are similarly concerned about Stagpaw being left behind potentially. But you'll have to see next year. For now, on to the last cat. Snip Cloud was exiled at 26 moons old during the heated clan meeting where the Dark Forest drama was revealed. Snip Cloud had yelled at Hollow Star for, in his eyes, telling lies about Frecklespot. He defended her in front of the whole clan and wasn't listening to Hollow Star's demands to stop seeing her. Snipcloud has said that she gave him strength to kill Mintsplash and avenge his father, but Hollow Star had yelled back that she made them both into cats that have now committed murder, and if he wishes to continue following her, then he is not welcome in the clan. Fernhart looked distraught but said nothing after seeing how quickly he had gone for a kill and being unable to unsee his smile. And as Snipcloud left the clan, this was the moon that Lizard Snap turned away without a word. Snipcloud has been having concerning statuses all year. Examples being daydreaming about killing a certain cat, yearning to fight, stealing prey from Bug Clan, practicing forbidden battle moves, etc. He's he's been a bad boy this year. And I'll say for now that he's following the clan as they move, but we'll have to see if he redeems himself or has any regrets as time goes on. He's allowed to return once he faces the reality of Freckle Spot, but for now, we'll just have to see. And as stated earlier, Silkfur is not happy with him right now, so that's a little concerning. Um, if Snipcloud ends up dying, because when they're lost or exiled, I don't think it gives you a reason, I might say that, that uh, Silkfur killed him, but we'll see. But yeah, that was year 14, and that was rough. This year really feels like the first time that Galaxy Clan has truly lost. With all the drama happening, there was no way I was ending the series here after my computer wiped. So I hope you guys are okay with the traveling arc. The traveling itself should only be like a moon or two, where I'll make a generator for things, but sadly, while I could recode Galaxy Clan with my notes, I just simply don't have the information to recode Bug Sharp and Creek Clan, so they're left behind in the computer. Goodbye. Hence why we're moving. That being said, I'm going to make a poll about whether you guys want me to code Thunder Spirit of Creek Clan into Galaxy Clan and say that he wanted to leave with them. Reminder that this is the dad of Flame Bear and Lightning Flight. I'll go into the yes or no's for why you might want to do that in the post, but reminder, I've recoded a lot of cats back into the Galaxy Clan so far, but I'm not completely done. My goal is to have year 15 out by the end of January and then get back into a normal schedule. 
But yeah, this year had the longest animatic ever, and I never want to beat it because that was 110 frames of drawings. Um, we're on to our fourth leader, Hollow Star, now, and there's a lot of drama going on. There's also a lot of crushes now, which is really interesting. And there's lots of new blood in the clan. And we also have another poly couple. Speaking of, reminder again about the new holiday stickers that are in my red bubble. It's the last link in the description. And thank you so much in general for the support on the series and the general help and support that I've been sent after losing everything on my computer, whether that be just sending love to me or helping me figure out how to code stuff. You guys are amazing, and here's the Galaxy Clan in 2024. I'd appreciate if you could check out my socials linked below. My commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way. And I hope you all have happy holidays, and I'll see you very soon with a video with me talking about my third year on YouTube. With that said, I'll see you next time. Peace!